Some time ago, I made a video where I used a charcoal chimney and charcoal to cook some sausages in my backyard. Well, since that video, based on some comments from viewers and some of my own ideas, I wondered, could I use this also for wood and for wood pellets? Well, let's see. So why would I even want to bother burning wood pellets or wood in a charcoal chimney? Well, it's based on what I've been trying to do with a few of my videos on this channel, which is to demonstrate alternatives to some of the expensive, quite honestly, expensive wood stoves that are out there. Not to say that those wood stoves aren't worth the value of what you're paying for them. It's more a matter of not everybody can afford them. So are there are less expensive alternatives if you want to get into small wood stoves that you can use for cooking over or whatever else you want to do with them? So the answer, yes, of course you can. There's all kinds of them. And one of the ones I'm most fond of is the IKEA Hobo stove, but I've come up with a few others over some of my videos and you can certainly check back to see uh, uh, any number of those being in use. But uh, this is one that struck a chord with a lot of people because there's really nothing you have to do to make this. You just go to the store, pick up a charcoal chimney, bring it home, drop your charcoal in, light it the way they're supposed to be lit according to the manufacturer's specifications, and you can start cooking right over it. Now I know that's not their original design, that's not what they're for. They're meant to preheat charcoal so you can put it in a barbecue and, uh, and cook from there. But they're very effective for a small cooking surface. They produce a lot of heat, a lot of heat. One of my viewers said that's the way they reverse sear their steaks. They'll cook it over a barbecue nice and slow to get a nice even cook and then when they want to uh, sear it shut, they use a, a charcoal chimney to do that. So yeah, you can. Okay, so that's fine, but uh, what about cooking with pellets or you know for boiling water or whatever else you want to use or wood? Well, there's a problem with the design. Now this charcoal burner that I have, this charcoal chimney, is one I picked up at the dollar store here in Halifax for four dollars. And so you can do much better than this in terms of quality of construction and durability. The Weber versions here are about $25. And I'm probably going to pick one up just because of how much fun I'm having with this one. But here's the problem with using wood in it. I can see down inside, look how large the air holes are in the base of this chimney. Now that's done for a reason. Charcoal requires a lot of air in order to come up to temperature quickly. And between that, the amount of air that's being drawn into the bottom and the chimney style, hence the name charcoal chimney, the chimney style, it draws a lot of air up through the charcoal and it gets it going and glowing into red hot coals very quickly. This won't work well with wood or with pellets for a couple of reasons. One, obviously the size of those holes won't allow pellets to stay inside, that's quite obvious. And even wood would have to be cut rather large. You're not going to use small sticks. You're going to, you're going to have to find some way to suspend both the pellets and the wood. And that's what I've done. Let me show you. All right, so what have I done to turn a charcoal chimney into a pellet and wood stove? Well, the answer was actually very easy. This was recommended to me by a couple of my viewers, but I had come up with the idea myself, I think before I even saw my viewers' comments, but it makes perfect sense. A vegetable steamer. I've been using these in other videos to show how effective they are at using or for burning wood pellets or wood in, so why not use it inside of the charcoal chimney? The only thing you have to do, and you can see I took the feet off of this, and that's not necessary, but uh, for this design, a charcoal chimney, I think it worked better. The only thing you have to do is make sure the bottom diameter is smaller than the diameter of the chimney. From there, once it drops down inside, it'll form fit as it flares open like this. So that's all I had to do. But there was a bit of a problem. It's way down here. The base of it is way down here. So if I put wood pellets in, I mean, it should work fine with wood. Well, it does work fine with wood. But if I put way pell pellets way down there, I'm eight, nine, ten inches away from the top of this. So I'm a long ways away from the flame. So this is the only modification I needed to make to this charcoal chimney in order to get it to work more effectively with my vegetable steamer. And it's not even necessary to do this with the Weber because the Weber already comes with this done. So what is it? Drill holes. And I drilled a pair of holes, three pair on each side that match up, that I can place a couple of skewers at any height. Well, there's only three heights, of course. At the height I want, through the holes, on both sides. There we go. Now, when I drop 
the uh, vegetable steamer in, I'm about four inches from the top of the stove. Much better relationship between the heat and flames to the top of the stove. All I need now is to put something on top to support the pot or fry pan or whatever I have. Now, for this demonstration, we're just going to use an uh, inexpensive, it's part of a grill that I had picked up and cut to size for backpacking, but it does fit on top of this just nicely. It works well for pots that are smaller in diameter than the charcoal chimney is, but you'll need something different if you want to use something larger like a fry pan a, you know big cast iron fry pan which they'll support this will support quite well you'll need something that creates a little bit of height such as a set of crossbars like I would make for the IKEA hobo stove but for this purposes I'm going to be using a 14 centimeter pot on top of this which is smaller than the 16 centimeter approximately 16 centimeter opening to the chimney and uh, yeah now what makes this so effective what makes this charcoal or this vegetable steamer so effective? Well, what I discovered in testing is, uh, uh, yes, it's got small holes, as you can see, so that keeps the pellets from drawing through, but more importantly, it restricts the airflow, and that is vital with this stove. Uh, let me tell you, the airflow, and of course it was designed to, to work this way, the airflow in the bottom and up through the chimney with the draw that chimney creates is so intense that you'll go through wood or pellets quickly even with this vegetable steamer inside. I can create an intense amount of heat, but it won't last as long. So you need to be able to restrict the airflow, and this vegetable steamer does it quite effectively for both pellets, which will hold very well, and wood. So let's take it outside. We'll put some pellets in, and let me show you just how quickly this will heat up a pot of water. All right, let's get this test going. So I am set up in my backyard today I, uh, for a couple of reasons, I guess. But the primary reason is, is when you think about it, a charcoal chimney is not a backpacking item uh, in any way. And I know there are some folding models, but most of them are not. They're straight cylinders like this one is. And I guess it's not something I'm going to be using backpacking, so likely something I would be using in my backyard or maybe car camping or any fixed site where I wouldn't have to carry it very far. So let's... Uh, get this going. Uh, I am in a little pit, as you can see, a little set up with some cinder blocks. It's my new test station, which is when I'm doing tests in the backyard. So what do I have? As you can see, once again, looking inside of the charcoal chimney, I have holes drilled across this one and some skewers sitting across to give me the height adjustment I need. Here's my vegetable steamer, which will drop down inside. Not very far, about six, maybe seven inches down from the top. And uh, the reason I'm doing that today is because I'm not going to put a lot of pellets in for this test. Really don't need a lot to get the idea of what's going to happen. Take my gloves off. In fact, all I'm going to use is one cup of wood pellets. And the wood pellets I'm using today are the soft wood variety. This is not something I would grill over. Likely has additives. Uh, it would likely add a resin flavor to anything I was grilling, but uh, I think for the purposes of this demonstration, I have a quantity I wanted to use up anyway. Can't get this bag open here in the cold. It's about minus five degrees Celsius today, which is not much below freezing, but a little bit. And a bit windy. So hopefully there's not too much wind noise. All right, so there's my pellets. To get this lit today, just some hand sanitizer. Give it a little squeeze around the outside. Get my lighter. Sometimes can't see. Yep, oh, it's gone. Can't see it in the in the light like this. So it won't take long, but I'm not going to make you sit and watch as that catches up before we put the water on. But it won't take long for those pellets to really get going. So once the flame is a little higher, I'll bring it back. So yes, in full disclosure, I just want to mention that it did take a little longer for the pellets to really get going today, more than usual, and I expect that's because of the minus five uh, Celsius temperature we have going, but uh, they caught, as you can see, and uh, you can see the secondary combustion taking place like a series of jets as it comes in through the sides of the vegetable steamer, but still look at the height of the flames. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Now, it would be nice, I suppose, if I had set up one of my other wood gas stoves, like my Solo or my Lexata, so you could have got a side-by-side -side comparison. But I will tell you from, from experience that the flames are reaching much higher 
and uh, I think probably burning through the fuel much more quickly. And that's the reason why the vegetable steamer is important for this, to reduce airflow significantly. Now, I'm just going to put a grill, just a small grill on top, not a set of crossbars. If you have a pot that's smaller than the diameter of your charcoal burner, this will work. If you have one that's larger, you're going to need something, like a fry pan, you're going to need something to raise the pot or the pan off the top of the stove so that you can have some air moving around. What I'm setting on top is a 13 centimeter uh, billy can. It's not really a billy can, it's a pot that I picked up at the dollar store again. Something that is cheap and inexpensive to go along with this project. And what I like about using it like this is that uh, because it's so close to the top of the charcoal burner, I'm getting little, very little influence from the wind from the sides. A little bit as you can see but very little. I'm going to take a second to back the camera up so you can see what it looks like from another angle. Alright, as you can see, no shortage of flame and heat coming up around the can right now. Working really well. No smoke. Uh, it's drawing like a chimney should and, you know, almost rocket stove performance right now. Now, again, the pellets won't last near as long. Uh, now, once again, I've only got one cup of pellets just for this test. One of the reasons I only use one cup of pellets is uh, I'm not looking for how long they'll burn, I've already done that, but I want to get through this test so I can get wood inside and show you what it looks like with wood. So that water is quickly coming to a boil, it'll be a few minutes yet. I had my best, I think I mentioned, is under four minutes, which is very reasonable, closer to three minutes in fact, and uh, yeah, this works great. And also, as I mentioned, you can vary the height. Now, likely I might have got a bit better performance had I brought the vegetable steamer up nearer to the top so the flame isn't quite so far from the bottom of the pot but uh, nothing to complain about with what I see there. All right I'm going to let this test run through and then we'll get it set up for using with wood. All right we're ready to go with the second test so the wood pellets have all burned out and I've gotten rid of the ashes. Now this time I'm not going to put the skewers in to suspend the vegetable steamer in fact I'm just going to put it right to the bottom with just over 10 inches from the base of the vegetable steamer to the top of the charcoal chimney. I am going to preload this, but I'm not going to fill it to full capacity with wood. I'm just going to put in a little bit of wood, not a whole lot, but enough that we should be able to get a reasonable fire going reasonably quickly. This is cut split hardwood some of which I had at home, some of which are from pieces of wood that I've picked up along the way in the woods and had pieces left over of. So how am I going to get this going? That's good. So you can see it's not perfectly vertically stacked. It doesn't have to be, of course, a few more pieces of wood I can add to this. To get this going, simple fire starter. And I actually have a little bit of fat wood. Not high quality fat wood, but you know, should work none just the same. Oh, it's cold out here when your lighter doesn't want to work, and it was in my pocket even. I think I'll have to place that one in first before I light it. And I've even got a third one. Might as well light it. All right. Like I said, a couple pieces of fat wood. give them a second to ignite and then I'm going to put some wood chips on it and we'll give it a, a few minutes for everything to really get going and uh, before we put the water back on. Gotta love fat wood. Look at the smoky stuff. But it does what it's supposed to do. Very smoky. Let's put some wood chips on. Yeah, a couple more. All right, a top lit burn for this. Uh, we'll give it a few minutes and we'll just, uh, we'll see how it ignites and we'll come back. All right, so I, I went inside for a minute just to uh, use the washroom and, and, uh, and then came back out and this is what I saw. Look how quickly that fire took off. I'm gonna change the angle of the camera. I am, by the way, for those who are concerned, I am about five feet above the flames right now, but I am gonna move anyway, just so you can get another look at that. So the wind has really picked up here in my backyard. And again, I hopefully 
the microphone I'm using is uh, protected from the wind. Uh, okay, I'm going to put my grill on. Put my pot of water on. Now I've only got two cups of water in here. It's just a standard for doing a test. It's nothing, uh, no special reason other than just to be consistent. And uh, I don't even know if I'll time this. I think I, I will just take a, a rough estimation of how long it comes to a boil because, uh, as you can see, that is almost the performance of a rocket stove. Incredible amount of heat and flame coming up from that. And that is with the vegetable steamer. So the vegetable steamer is restricting airflow to a significant degree, which you need when you're using wood anyway, because those holes are too big for, for uh, putting wood in because most of it will fall through. It also prevents coals from dropping down, depending on what you've got underneath your chimney. But uh, even so, the chimney effect is really kicking in. And with that little bit of wood, look at how much flame is being produced around the outside of this uh, the pot right now. All right, I'm, I'm going to cut away, but we'll, I'll just give you an idea how quickly. Actually, let me check. Steam, bubbles on the bottom. What's that? Less than a minute, minute and a half. So I will cut away and we'll come back when it's a rolling boil and I'll give you a rough idea how long it took. Oh, hard rolling boil. Okay. So I didn't, again, I didn't put the timer on, but what I will do is I'll take a look at the camera and see what the elapsed time was, but I'm thinking that three minutes at the most. That's pretty impressive. All right, let me just take the pot off, and it is hot. Look at the flame coming out of that. Yeah, that is impressive, really it is. It's in no way can be identified as a wood gas stove, but it is performing like a rocket stove. All right, I think we've seen enough for the test. That's all I wanted to do, making two simple tests. Let's wrap this video up. Okay, I'd say those tests were demonstrated just how effective this can be, using a vegetable steamer inside of a charcoal chimney. So once again, this was just meant to show that you can create some very effective stoves that are multi-fuel in the sense that they have uh, can use charcoal, wood, or wood pellets. Now, the only thing I haven't figured out well to do, and I don't think it would be very hard, is how could I put a, an alcohol stove in this? And I think that's just a matter of raising those uh, crossbars, the skewers, up to the higher level and getting just the right uh, headspace that you need for the pot gap. Uh, would I do that? You know, this is not a packable stove. It's not something I'm going to kick in my backpack and go places, but for playing in the backyard or at a campsite or car camping, very inexpensive, very effective way of cooking or boiling water. So yeah, uh, I think it turned out quite effective. Uh, let me know what you think. Did you uh, Do you agree that it's an effective and inexpensive way of creating a wood stove out of a charcoal chimney? Was there something you would do different? Would you like to see another ad adaptation that I can try with this? Or if you have any other ideas for inexpensive wood stoves, then please share them with me all in the comments section below, and I'll see if I can't get to them over the over time. All right, thanks very much for watching. Get outside. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.